a new session on dentistry and more. Today's video is a continuation of our topical fluorides. So in topical fluoride video, having mentioned about the mechanism of action in each category that is the three categories sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride and APF. So the mechanism of action of each uh, topical fluoride, how this uh, fluoride is getting incorporated into this hydroxyapatite crystal the mechanism and the byproducts or the intermediate products which is formed during this chemical reaction is different in each category uh, means uh, each product is getting formed when we apply these uh, products so uh, in this video I'll be explaining in detail about uh, the various mechanism of action of sodium fluoride Stannous fluoride and APF. So, let's see what is the mechanism of action. So, how this topical fluoride of sodium fluoride helping the tooth to fight against dental caries. In systemic fluoride, we have seen the fluoride goes into the enamel and it replaces the hydroxyl ion and it creates a fluorohydroxy apatite or fluoroapatite crystals which is very stronger than the normal hydroxyapatite. So let's see what is happening in uh, sodium fluoride mechanism or Knudsen's technique. So when we apply sodium fluoride, what happens is this sodium fluoride, it reacts with hydroxyapatite crystal and to form calcium fluoride. This is a byproduct which forms calcium fluoride. So it start getting formed the calcium fluoride is getting formed on the surface and a thick layer is formed at the end of four minutes so what happens after that this thick layer calcium fluoride interferes with further diffusion of fluoride so once this thick layer is formed we apply sodium fluoride again and again there is no point because this thick layer interferes with further diffusion so there is no point applying sodium fluoride after four minutes so that is why most of the topical fluorides are applying at a period of four minutes so this particular process is known as chalking of effect this is very important it is uh, seen in sodium fluoride once the calcium fluoride is formed after the application for a four minutes period it further prevents the diffusion of fluoride so it blocks further entry of fluoride ions and it is known as chalking off effect so this sudden stop of entry of fluoride is termed as chalking off so this calcium fluoride acts as a reservoir so this calcium fluoride will be there on the surface and it slowly releases the fluoride okay so it is not the sodium fluoride it releases the fluoride for the prevention of dental caries it is actually the calcium fluoride releases the fluoride so we might think that it is sodium fluoride is releasing fluoride but no it is the calcium fluoride so calcium fluoride reacts with hydroxyapatite then there will be fluoride uh, high fluoridate or hydroxyapatite which increases the concentration of fluoride on enamel surface and prevent caries so from calcium fluoride the actual fluoride is releasing out okay not from the sodium fluoride so that is the chemical reaction happening with the first topical fluoride method that is not sense technique so all these technique we have covered in detail in that video so in this video I will be explaining about the chemical reaction happening and especially this phenomenon known as choking off effect choking off means we are strangling someone and uh, forcing uh, or preventing his uh, breath so that is choking off so similar way we are strangling the further entry of fluoride because calcium fluoride uh, act as a barrier it interferes with the further diffusion of fluoride okay so let's see uh, the second product that is stannous fluoride so we apply in uh, almost very high ppm that is 20,000 or around 20,000 ppm. So all this we have discussed already. So I'll be 
explaining about the mechanism of action. So, when stannous fluoride is applied at a very low concentration, what happens is there is tin hydroxy appetite formation. Okay, so stannous is nothing but tin. It's a chemical name for uh, tin, SN. So tin hydroxy appetite is formed, which gets dissolved in oral tissues when we apply in low concentration. So that is a scenario when we apply in low concentration. But when we apply at very high concentration, what happens is there is a formation of calcium trifluorostanate. So this stannous fluoride reacts with the calcium of hydroxy appetite and forms calcium trifluorostanate. At the same time, there is another product which is known as tin trifluorophosphate. So these two products will be formed once stannous fluoride applied at very high concentration. Okay, low concentration there is uh, no much action, only tin hydroxy appetite forms. At high concentration, these two products are formed, calcium trifluorostanate and tin trifluorophosphate. So this tin trifluorophosphate is responsible for making the tooth structure more stable. So this is the product which actually act as a uh, barrier or prevents dental caries. Because this is a product which helps tooth to become more stronger than the normal hydroxy appetite. Uh, and calcium fluoride is the end product. So after this, there will be end product that is calcium fluoride. In both low and high, high concentration, which reacts with hydroxy appetite and a small fraction of fluorohydroxy appetite also gets formed. So at the same time, along with this, there is a very small amount of fluorohydroxy appetite. Because at the end product, calcium fluoride is there. So it reacts with hydroxy appetite and fluorohydroxy appetite. But very low amount. In sodium fluoride mechanism, calcium fluoride is the main product. Okay, but whereas in Muller's technique of stannous fluoride, this tin trifluorophosphate is the main product. There is a calcium trifluorostanate, but this is the main product which helps the tooth to prevent caries or make it very hard. So that is the second mechanism of stannous fluoride or molar solution. So let's see what is acidulated phosphate fluoride or APF mechanism. Okay. So here what happens is when APF is applied to teeth, in the beginning time there is dehydration and shrinkage of hydroxy appetite crystals because we are applying it at very low pH. So it is applied at 1.23 percentage and uh, 3 pH which is very highly acidic so it creates dehydration and shrinkage in hydroxy appetite crystals and after that an intermediate product known as DCPD is formed that is dicalcium phosphate dihydrate is formed so this forms in APF so always there, there is no need of confusion when we apply sodium fluoride Calcium fluoride is formed when we apply stannous fluoride. Calcium trifluorostanate and tin trifluorophosphate is formed. When we apply APF. DCPD is formed. So the DCPD is very highly reactive and starts forming immediately after APF is applied. So fluoride penetrates into the crystals more deeply through the opening. So there was shrinkage and dehydration so this fluoride can easily penetrate to the deep form deeper uh, parts of enamel and forms fluoroapatite so this dcpd is a crucial uh, product which forms when we apply apf so this dcpd formed which will be later converted into fluoroapatite okay so uh, the compounds which are uh, very vital in APF is DCPD, stannous fluoride which is uh, trifluorophosphate and in sodium fluoride technique it was calcium fluoride and choking of effect seen in sodium fluoride. So these are the three uh, techniques which uh, we use to 
apply topical fluorides and the mechanism and its chemical reactions so that's all about the mechanism of action which is uh, associated with um, topical fluorides so after that we have seen all this uh, the comparison which we have discussed already the pH percentage and all other things and fluorides so I'll come up with a new video so it, it was just a, a extension of our topical fluoride video uh, just to uh, give you a brief idea about the chemical reaction which is happening with the topical fluoride application thank you